Hi, I'm Danforth Prince from Blood Moon Productions, reacting to the death of Zsa, Zsa Gabor this morning. I love Zsa, Zsa Gabor. She had more style, more panache, more pizzazz than almost anyone else before or since. Here's my testimonial to her. My favorite Hungarian, a woman with more humor and pizzazz and more style than virtually anyone else before or since. God had a talent for creating exceptional women, and you, Zsa, Zsa Dalink, were near the top of the list. I love Zsa, Zsa. Here's why. Zsa, Zsa Gabor, the last great courtesan of the 20th century, passed into immortality on December 19th, 2016. Her last wish was not granted. She suffered a heart attack just weeks before her 100th birthday. This illustrious femme fatale of a bygone era made headlines around the world as the bombshell from Budapest who seduced some of the world's most famous men. She was the last of the fabled Gabor sisters. Magda and Eva predeceased her. Born during the twilight of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, these wonderful women transferred their glittery dreams, gaudy flamboyance, and perfect manners to the new world with gold-digging ambition. In their heyday, they were hailed as Helen of Troy, Madame du Barry, and Madame de Pompadour. They conquered Hollywood with guts, glamour, and goulash. Zsa, Zsa's death after a long illness made headlines in both Europe and the United States. A legend to an older generation, she is relatively unknown to millennials, but she was, in her heyday, the Paris Hilton of her day. Actually, she was married to Paris Hilton's grandfather, Conrad Hilton, founder of the Hotel Dynasty, but she spent more time in bed with his son, Nicky Hilton, the first husband of Elizabeth Taylor. Zsa, Zsa's death has brought a rash of inquiries into the offices of Blood Moon Productions, which, back in 2013, published the only definitive book on the three Gabor sisters. In 2013, Those Glamorous Gabors, Bombshells from Budapest, was voted Best Biography of the Year at that year's Hollywood Book Festival. One reviewer claimed, there's a revelation, often shocking, on every page. And Blood Moon is confident that, that film scripts based on the lives of these three extraordinary sisters are already circulating through the film studios of Hollywood. The question being asked by some film executives is, what blonde-haired actress today could realistically portray these shimmering goddesses who collectively snagged 20 wealthy husbands and at least 500 other conquests? In Europe and in America, these Hungarian courtesans seduced ambassadors, kings, dukes, princes, and billionaire industrialists. At the time of her death, Zsa, Zsa was still married to her final husband, Prince von Anhalt, the so-called Duke of Saxony. If that title is still extant, Zsa, Zsa, based on her marriage, would have been the last Duchess of Saxony. With the publication of its pioneering biography on the Book of Bora Sisters, Blood Moon became the first and probably the last publisher to highlight the exploits of these beautiful women, lifting at last the mink and diamond curtain on these three Hungarian coquettes. Here's just a brief preview of some of the candid revelations that appear within the book we released about Zsa, Zsa. The Turkish diplomat, Burhan Belge, introduced a teenage Zsa, Zsa to Kemal Atatürk, the father of Turkey. Within days, she became his mistress. He taught me the sexual secrets of the sultans of the Ottoman Empire. In Cairo, Belge introduced her to King Farouk of Egypt. He raped me. At least I think he did. He had the world's tiniest penis. Burhan took Zsa, Zsa to Albania, where she met King Zog. He told me he'd divorce his wife to marry me and make me the Queen of Albania, she said. Thinking that Belge was directly in line to become the next president of Turkey, Adolf Hitler invited both Zsa, Zsa and her husband to his vacation retreat, the Berghof in Bavaria. According to Zsa, Zsa the Führer had his vile tongue hanging out, panting after me. I'm sure he would have dumped Eva Braun for me. Prince Ali Khan pursued me, but settled for Rita Hayworth instead, Zsa, Zsa claimed. Then, when I moved to England, I became the toast of London. Sir Anthony Eden made at least two visits a week to my boudoir. Through him, I met Prince Philip, who seduced me on several occasions. All I can say, diplomatically, is that Queen Elizabeth is one lucky woman. 
The future U.S. President, John F. Kennedy, also took me to my bed. I got my claws into him before Jacqueline, that woman with the bad skin, won him over. I bought Elvis Presley's villa in Bel Air. I was told he seduced only young girls. Not so. I, w I remember that during our lovemaking, his recording of Baby Let's Play House was playing. As a Hollywood star, Zsa, Zsa confessed, I had them all, from Richard Burton to Sean Connery. I refused to have sex with Frank Sinatra, so he raped me. My husband, George Sanders, was said to be the love of my life, Zsa, Zsa said. Actually, the love of his life was Tyrone Power, and Ava nabbed him. Many of Hollywood's female stars also pursued me, Zsa, Zsa confessed, Marlena Dietrich, Tallulah Bankhead, Greta Garbo, and Joan Crawford, among others. I even had my Latin lovers, notably from the Dominican Republic, wherever the hell that is. Rafael Trujillo, Jr., son of the brutal dictator, asked me to marry him, promising to make me first lady of the DR. My biggest all-time surprise, playboy and diplomat Porfirio Rubirosa, was the King Kong of the bedroom. Having sex with him was like giving birth to a baby. And then, of course, there was that stupid film role I accepted. I was a scientist in the campiest film ever made, Queen of Outer Space. In Hollywood, I've always said that a girl has got to do whatever a girl can do. My incredible life, said Zsa, Zsa can be summed up in one line. What's love got to do with it? Here is Jaja in her most famous role, that of Jane Avril in Moulin Rouge in 1952. With her passing, newspapers around the world said it all. Farewell, adieu, auf Wiedersehen, and au revoir, my darling. We love you, Jaja, and good night. <laughs>